Hi, my name is Danny, and welcome to Esoteric Moment. Today I wanted to talk about preserving our harvest, which is something that we do a lot of because of the work we do in community gardens. So when I'm talking about preserving harvest, I mean literally how we put away our vegetables and fruits for the rest of the year so that we can make homemade meals as often as possible. And I just wanted to share some of the basic techniques that I use and hopefully it will inspire you to put away a little bit of food yourself, whether you grow that food yourself or if you you're purchasing it at a farmer's market. To begin with, I do a lot of canning. This is a WEC canning jar, which has a rubber and glass top seal. And I have a video where I did a review way back when on WEC jars. I really love these. They're more expensive than the ball or cur mason jars. So I'm just kind of slowly adding them to my collection but this is a liter of tomato sauce. I also do salsa. This is a corn salsa that we mix with black beans. I do tons of pickles, mostly dill pickles, but also some bread and butter, and then like a small batch of pickle relish that lasts a couple years. I do a small batch of pickled beets, which sounds terrible, but it's actually really incredible in January and February on fresh spinach and pecans and feta cheese, and occasionally some like apple juice or maybe some jellies or something like that. So canning is great because it takes a lot of time at the beginning to prepare your food, to make it hot enough, turn it into tomato sauce, whatever preserving method you might be using. But then once you can it and use a water bath to do that, it can sit on your shelf for months upon months usually. And it's much easier to store, it looks beautiful, and when you need to use it, it's basically pre-measured for a lot of recipes. Canning does take a little bit of investment and tools. I don't do any pressure canning because it's like a whole nother set of tools, but I have a water bath canner, um, a, a tool that kind of is like a tong that you can use to pick up hot, hot jars. I also have a really nice, um, you know, mini pan that I can do vegetables in and a big, big saucepan. It also helps when you have someone to work with. There are some processes that, you know, depending on the size of your kitchen can be tricky, but it can be very helpful to have family members participate in the process too. And canning, I do a lot of drying. I have a simple Presto dehydrator. It comes with little trays that you stack on top of each other. Then you plug it in and you dry things for, you know, hours. I use this mostly for herbs, that's kind of the big use, and things that I might use in teas, so like nettle, rose petals, that sort of thing. Um, like lavender is really great. Once I've dried them, I put them in little jars that are easy to make airtight but get into. Um, lots of sage, that sort of thing. Basil, oregano, thyme, those are pretty common ones that I do every year. The nice thing about drying herbs is that then you have the seasoning and flavor that you want all year round. And frankly, I really believe strongly that using the right herbs can help your health and immune system, especially if you're adding them to most of the meals that you're making. I also do a little bit of fermentation. So this is some kombucha tea that I'm making. And I have a video that I did over on Pagan Perspective on how I make kombucha. I also do some sourdough bread occasionally. And these fermentation processes is something that you have to keep going all the time, but it is another way of preserving food. You can do sauerkraut or kimchi, other ways of putting vegetables away for the winter and kind of adding new elements and flavors to the food. Freezing is another favorite of mine. This is a bag of apples already sliced for pie or tarts or anything like that. Some broccoli already sliced. And usually it means cutting your vegetables down, boiling it for a few minutes, not so that they're cooked, but just like starting the process and then freezing them in airtight bags. Right now I'm using Ziploc bags because they're cheap and easy to get. I would ideally like to freeze all of my stuff in glass jars, 
but because I do a lot of canning and I don't have as many cans as I really want to put food away yet, I'm still kind of working on investing in that material so that I have enough to can everything and freeze in glass. Of course, there's food that we can just put away like pumpkins, squash, potatoes, onions, garlic, those things we can just keep in a pantry-like area, try and pay attention to the humidity and temperature. Root vegetables like carrots or parsnips also can kind of be dug up at the end of the fall and just stuck in a bag in the fridge and they last months. And putting all of this food away is really important because we spend less on our food budget during the winter and it also means that we know where the food is coming from and we know the quality of the food. So often in the winter you can go and get a bag of carrots but they're really not going to taste as good as those carrots that you dug in August from your garden. So why not find ways to make sure that you have that flavor and that health and that bounty all year round. For me, I start preserving my food as soon as harvests start coming in. So usually in the middle of the summer, uh, maybe some jellies at the beginning of the spring season. But really after August 1st, that's when all of my preserving and canning kind of goes full forced and we spend many evenings and weekends putting food away, which sounds like a huge investment in time, and it kind of is, but so worth it in my opinion. I also think putting away your own food is a great way to connect with the natural world and actually feel the seasons. Plus, all your food just tastes better. If you're thinking about getting started and putting more of your food away, you've been gardening maybe for a year, or you go to the farmer's market all the time and want that delicious produce all year round, I would suggest starting with one method. Maybe freezing seems the most possible to you. So get some Ziploc bags and start researching how you blanch vegetables to freeze them. So find a method that really works for the time that you can commit to and do that one method for one or two years. See what you like, see what you don't like, and then maybe start adding in all these other methods. Really, anyone can learn how to do these preservation techniques, and there are so many resources out there. Just start with one and experiment from there. I hope if you're putting away food this fall that all of your projects are pretty much done and you are feeling so wealthy and bountiful in all of your produce put away. And if that's not something you've done, I hope you take a chance to try something new this year. Maybe you get the last broccoli at the farmer's market and freeze it or dry some herbs. In the comments, let me know whether you've preserved any food and what your favorite technique for putting things away for the winter are. Thanks for watching and as always, may you find peace in the sacred grove. Today I have another book review. Fitting for October, I am reviewing The Pagan Book of Living and Dying by Starhawk. This is a book that I think every pagan needs on their bookshelf. This is a book that I would recommend to everyone, pagan or not, to read well before they are ever in the midst of confronting death. 